John Tesh and Connie Selica come up. I don't know how many of you know them. I went to um, Riverside. Um, I'm hearing things. Is this somebody speaking to me? Okay. Uh, I, I went to Riverside, California and held a meeting and John Tesh contacted our office and said that they would like to meet us and greet us. And uh, I said, I don't know who John Tesh is. Everybody else did. But, you know, I've just missed 45 years worth, well, 52 years worth now of American culture. I have unplugged and been plugged into Jesus and I just didn't know anything. Now, when they mentioned Connie Selica, I didn't know her by name, but I did watch America's, uh, what, America's Greatest Hero. And I remember Connie through that. And so anyway, uh, we went ahead and set up a meeting and they came to those meetings in Riverside. And I tell you what, it was awesome. These are two Certified celebrities, which I have a lot of Christian ministers come here who are celebrities in their mind only. And uh, they treat my staff bad sometimes and act like they're slaves. Connie and uh, John have just been so loving and kind. And I mean, they have come here to receive their, it was so refreshing to see somebody that was hungry for God and loving. And so, man, we have become great friends. And John came here and uh, did a PBS special that we recorded. And right now, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's being aired on PBS, you know, on different uh, stations around the country right now. So what a blessing to have them. So John and Connie, welcome to our Healing is Here conference. They're remoting in from their place there in uh, California. And we love you guys and welcome. Andrew, you, we thanks. love you. We love you and Jamie. We are so grateful. So grateful for you. Amen. So, John, you've got a book out now and uh, Relentless. And uh, you came on my television program and we advertised that. And so we want to talk about that. But these people, we don't have a healing journeys on you yet. I think we're talking about doing one, but. We would love to hear your testimony about what God has done in your life and how he healed you of cancer. Yeah, it's a, it's a story that I think uh, many people have, uh, have in, their, in their life where it was just life was amazing for, for, for Connie and me. We had two incredible grandkids. This is 2015 and uh, our business was going great and we were enjoying you know, our church and, and Connie's mom had gotten, had gotten sick and so we, Connie was dealing with her. We were both, we'd both moved out of town to, to take care of, of her. And, uh, you know, there was, there was some stress, but, uh, but we, we just knew that God was with us. And, uh, I went for a routine exam for, uh, for my general practitioner. And when they did the, uh, the prostate exam, um, the, the look on the doctor's face was the scariest thing you could possibly see. He was like, wait a second there's something wrong here. And I had, had, I'd been tested regularly for years and, you know, and, and had blood tests and the blood tests showed nothing. And uh, it turns out that what he found was, was uh, a, a group of virulent tumors that didn't make any blood markers. And so uh, it was, uh-oh, from the doctor turned into, in, a, in about two or three weeks, had turned into biopsies, and we ended up in a, in a hospital in Los Angeles. And and the man who did the the doctor who did the biopsy basically said to, to Connie and me, "Well, what he said to me was he tapped me on the back and he said, now you just go make some lemonade out of these lemons.' When he gave John 18 months to live, wow. And he said it was inoperable, and uh, that's what we were to do is to go make." Lemonade out of lemons. You know, somebody and, needs and, to teach doctors how to have a little <laughs> bedside manners. I mean, exactly. it's not just physical bodies. Man, you got a soul inside there that they need to deal with. Well, yeah. we ran out of there as fast as we could. And I have to say there was a dark cloud over our home um, with sadness and fear. We had so much fear when we got this diagnosis. And the first test came back on my 
60th birthday. It was my 60th birthday present. And so it was middle of summer and we were in darkness uh, with fear. And we both dove in to learn everything we could possibly learn, not about the healing from Jesus, which is what we should have done at that point. But what we did was we dove in to learn everything we could possibly learn about the cancer that was inside of him. Did you guys happen to hear Connie? It was on right before you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that was one of the things I think that was a turning point with her was that her friends wanted her to learn everything she could about breast cancer. And instead, she learned everything she could about healing. That's the right approach. Well, that didn't happen right away for us. Um, you know, the, the shows that we do on the, on the radio, My Intelligence for Your Life and Connie's Intelligence for Your Health show, we are plugged into so many high level scientists, nutritionists, doctors, you know, surgeons and all that. So we used those, those contacts to figure out, uh, we became experts on, on prostate cancer, on adenocarcinoma, which is very similar, by the way, to, uh, to breast cancer and read, read books, and I cold called a guy at uh, Dr. Patrick Walsh at Johns, at Johns Hopkins, and Connie dug deeper than I did. I mean, it, it, to the point where when we went to Johns Hopkins uh, uh, about five years ago, uh, we went there for the, my first surgery. Connie had so much information in her brain that, that uh, the doctor, uh, Dr. Ted Schaefer, uh, came over, asked me, said, is Connie in the healthcare business? <laughs> she thought that she was a doctor. I have forgotten uh, it all. I'm yeah. replacing it with the knowledge of the yeah. healing of Jesus. So did this, I knowledge, everything other. did this knowledge give you any hope or did it just add to your hopelessness? It added to the hopelessness and to the fear. Absolutely. Yeah. The guy, I mean, what they, what they told us in, in, in Los Angeles was that uh, the tumor is basically too risky, tumors uh, inoperable. And, and these are, you know, they grade the tumors on, on one to 10. And I had like three Gleason, as they're called, Gleason nines. And so a lot of times what they do is they won't operate. They'll just hit you with radiation and, and chemo and stuff like that. But there was a doctor, Schaefer, in, at, at Hopkins that said, um, you know, pretty much the only guy who can save your life right now. Wow. So did you, uh, how did you get healed or uh, tell us about how you got out of this fear and this terrible prognosis into healing? Yeah. Well, I mean, for, first of all, I, I, my, my wish for everybody who's watching right now is, is to pay really close attention to what you're about to hear and pay really close attention to whatever Andrew and anybody at Karis Bible says, because uh, it, it, it became ultimately an amazing journey. But I also want to say that this, this was, and you can see, you can read this in the, in, in the book, this was really a love story. You know, what, what my, the, the agape love that my wife Connie showed me during this whole process was, was, was quite amazing. But it wasn't just, uh, it wasn't just Maximus Odysseus in, in one of my favorite movies, Gladiator, right? It wasn't, uh, it wasn't Paul who said, uh, the Apostle Paul who said, this is just a light affliction. I eventually cratered. Uh, I mean, after two surgeries, chemo, androgen deprivation therapy, bone biopsies, just an enormous amount of suffering, Andrew. I, I, there's, a, there's a chapter in the book called Pity Party, which I didn't want to, uh, when you talk about self-righteousness, you talked about that earlier, is that I just, I, I didn't want to show that side of myself, but I almost ruined my marriage, I almost ruined my family, and I, and I did for several weeks, where I was, I, I just felt, I became a cancer patient. I became a cancer patient. Identified as a cancer patient, I, but I, it was truly a cancer that we went through. I wasn't in the machines and I was not going through the surgery, but I talk about it as our cancer because it affected the whole family, but we definitely went through it together. Yeah, and what happened was, you know, in the middle of all of this, um, we, uh, a friend of ours, why don't you tell the, the, the cha-cha story because Andrew knows cha-cha as well. Um, yeah, well, it was after the second surgery before starting chemo, I believe. Um, we were going to a church that I, um, I found in Chino Hills, which was about an hour drive away. And then we were going there for a while. And one day our gate rings, the, which is, you know, the buzzer from the, the top of the road. And it's this woman, Cha-Cha. 
And now Cha-Cha was someone we knew from a previous Messianic church that um, I had attended and our kids, our girls went to preschool together, but we hadn't seen her for a really long time. So it was strange that she was knocking on the door and uh, she came down and she said, hey, I hear you're going to Chino Hills, to Jack Hibbs Church in Chino Hills. Can I get a ride? First of all, we said, well, how'd you know that we were going there? And she said, oh, I just heard. So we started taking her, picking her up to go on this hour ride on Sunday mornings to go to church. And one day she said, listen, I have something I want to give you. Now, you may not be able to handle the accent, yeah. but <laughs> I want you to listen to it. So we said, OK, and we got in the car and he said, no, we're not listening to it. And, I well, said, or, you know, and let me just put a insert. This is that. Everybody on the planet had been sending me videos of meditation and, to and, to, and listen to this and, and listen crystals to that. and meditation. Yeah, and you should probably try, uh, you know, goat's milk uh, in your ear. I mean, just I mean, just you know, all kinds of stuff. You know? <laughs> Which you tried, right? Goat's milk. Yes, Did you actually do that? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, but it was about like that. It was the only thing I could think of. But it's yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. So um, of course, um, I put it in. And I said, we're listening to this. Well, it was a better way to pray. Mm. And we listened to it all the way home. And it wasn't finished when we got in the driveway. And we stayed in our car in the driveway. And we finished listening to it. And then as much as I dove into what that cancer was that was inside of him, I was diving into anything Andrew Womack had to teach. And... Everything I say when I share with people, it all comes from Andyisms and um, and the teachings that we got from you and others at Karis. And um, we just can't say enough how grateful we are that you had the revelation about healing, that you have a ministry that teaches mm. grace, grace and faith, mm. and that we get to learn through you and we get to have the relationship with the living Christ that we have now because Amen. it would not have been and, and I grew up a Catholic, and I listened to uh, Nikki Oshesky and um, Teresa Hotelling yesterday, yeah. and both of them, I was jealous because both of them talked, I think, about how they grew up in households with the word being taught and being spoken. I did not grow up in that household, and I wish I did so that I could have bypassed all that fear that was encompassing our yeah. our. our yeah our yeah. souls and our hearts when we were hit with this news. I wish I did, but it, it, my, my story is my story. I grew up a Catholic. The problem with growing up a Catholic, the way I grew up a Catholic was I was never encouraged to have a personal, intimate relationship yeah. with Jesus, never. And maybe I missed it, but I wasn't getting it from the Catholic church. I was getting the rules. I was getting the laws. I was not getting that nurturing of an intimate relationship with Jesus. And that's, if I say I'm grateful for the experience, I'm grateful for what has come out of our cancer journey. Well, I know I mean, that that's, that, not, that. that's probably not the best upbringing, but one of the good things, John and Connie, is that because you guys uh, didn't have that when you came into that intimate relationship with the Lord. It is paramount in your life. I've visited with you many times and you guys are passionate about the Lord. And sometimes people that grew up with it don't really realize what they've got. They don't appreciate it. So one good thing is you guys really appreciate Jesus and what he's done for you. It's evident we in your do. life. Amen. It's true. And, you know, getting back into the, into the car with your, with your CD of A Better Way to Pray, I, you know, I've, I grew up in the, in the church. My dad ran the Methodist church on Long Island. My mom was, we were in church like four days a week at least. Uh, I, I didn't even discover the Old Testament until I went to the Messianic church with Connie. But it was, uh, it was just, I was, you know, going through the, going through the motions and, and having visited so many churches as a, as, as a musician and, and, and just as a, you know, as a speaker. Um, I, I, one of the things I don't like is, is a pastor 
who is, uh, is, is just not bold. Okay. So it's a little too milk toast. So when I'm, I'm in the car and all of a sudden this guy who I've never met, who sounds like one of my relatives from, from North Carolina is screaming at me and <laughs> he's not hill screaming, days. but not screaming, not screaming, but saying things like, how dumb can you be and still breathe? It's time to use your hat for more than a hat rack. And I'm going, <laughs> you know, I, I like this guy, you know? And, and so I was listening. I, I, I was listening because what you were saying was, was making sense. And I think that if, you know, we were in a, in a position where we were ready for a revelation, but it had to be delivered the right way. And the way that came, the way the Holy Spirit led Cha-Cha to our house, the way we went, Connie found this church just while, while I was in the middle of my pity party. She found a church and went out and saw Jack Hibbs and the way it all came together. And then, the, and then Cha-Cha just at the last minute goes, here, how about this CD, you know? And that's why we always like to affirm you for how many millions and millions of CDs you and product that you've given away because it might be on the shelf for 20 years and all of a sudden pop up like that and somebody gets healed. And now we get to share your teachings on YouTube. Whenever anybody asks about what we went through, we can share on YouTube is another wonderful way. There is a scripture though that, 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 that lit us up, that unlocked everything. And you know, I was, when I grew up, I was always like, oh, how many scriptures do I need to know to do this and do that? And when you landed on Mark eleven twenty three, 23, whoever says to this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will be done, shall have whatever he says. Therefore, whatever you ask when you pray, believe it, you receive it, and you will and you will have it. That's all I need. Actually, it's all, all Kenneth Hagin needed too, right? That's I right. thought that he wrote that first. Yeah, that's right. We actually have it tattooed on our bodies so we don't Really? It. But yeah. it's also, uh, wow. this tattoo, I placed it here because it's also a wonderful way for people to say, hey, what is that? Yeah, what does yeah, it mean? Yeah. And all mine is, is the sea and a mountain. And I get to tell wow. the story about what it means. Yeah. All right, so you need to get into this part of the story because when you got this revelation, you were in the midst of your first round of cancer treatments and you went ahead with the treatments and, uh, and dealt with it that way through the doctors the first time. Explain all that. Well, I, I think you've said it too. There's no wrong way to be healed mm -hmm. and no bad way to be healed. We got our healing the way we got our healing and we had faith for a while in the doctors. And then our faith grew as we studied and as we opened our hearts and learned our faith grew and it got to a point, and John explains it really well, where our faith came out of suffering and we said enough is enough. And there was something that came over us that was a supernatural peace a supernatural peace that cannot be explained any other way than the Holy Spirit. And that same day that I had that supernatural peace, and I've had a couple of Holy Spirit um, signs through this journey, uh, but that same day when we made the decision not to go ahead with the 60 plus radiation treatments that they wanted to do next. Well, let me just interrupt I, for a second that you, you got this teaching, you, you, uh, studied for how long after the first cancer before you had the relapse? What was the period of time that you were filling yourself with the word? I don't know. What was it? it seemed like a couple of years. Yeah. All right. I so mean, this is the his point first, that I was on. His first diagnosis make. was 2015. Yeah. So that's the point I was wanting to make that it took a couple of years of you getting into the word. And when the cancer came back the second time, you were at a totally different level. Yeah. It was actually yeah. the third time. Yeah. Yeah, I was well, listening when, when we were first learning Mark eleven twenty three and and uh, I, uh, uh, by his stripes you are healed First uh, Peter two twenty four and, and Isaiah fifty fifty three uh, and we were like wow I, how did I miss this and so we we felt power coming upon us uh, it, it, but it was it was almost like well but you know, the doctors say this, right? So we were, we were still on, on the fence, but I mean, to paint, to further paint a picture, I, I'm exhausted, right? She's exhausted. And so we get to a, a doctor's appointment, uh, radiation oncology, and we're underground, which is where they, you know, in the hospital, which is where they do all the radiation. And we walk in and it looked like, I mean, it, it was just the walking dead. People were there, they had burn marks on their necks. They were, I mean, it was just so terrible. It was like, it was almost like a, 
like a cartoon, a horrible cartoon. And we had the meeting with the doctor. And when he went through the, the treatments, uh, you know, it's all of a sudden you start hearing like a rushing in your in your ears. And, and, and Connie and I and Gib, our son, were there. But Connie and I, had, we were, our eyes were locked while this guy was talking. And I'm sure people have had this, you know, had this experience. And he goes through all the contraindications, you know, where, he, well, you, lose, you may lose this function, that function, this function. And we got to, when they got to the functions that I really wanted to keep, I'm like, you, you know, hey. Uh, hey, which ones uh, didn't you want? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Connie says I'm usually a little too graphic during this period, so we'll just leave it there. Um, I anyway, remember so, talking to you personally, and you said when they got to the deal that you'd lose all of your sexual functions, you uh, said I, you drew the line there. <laughs> you, you said it. I just you said, said it. it for you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so, and, and Connie and I shared a look, and at that moment, the two of us were, I was done immediately. Wait a minute, not when he talked about sexual function. Oh, I, I, I may have exaggerated. <laughs> it's, a better, it's a better story that way, but no, it was, it was during that whole thing, and it was just like, okay. So um, it, the truth is, and you know this to be true, Andrew, is that if, if, if Connie and I hadn't had faith for these amazing doctors at Johns Hopkins and Christopher Logothetis at uh, MD Anderson and Brian Chapin and all those guys, if we hadn't had faith for them, for their, for their genius early on, I'd be dead. I was just, I, I was not grown up. We were not grown up in, in what, what the word really said about the promise of, of healing. And then next steps came for you, from you where you plugged us into, into a, you know, a, a local uh, Bible study here in town. That was with uh, Butch and Julianne. Butch, Butch and, and Julianne, Julianne Hartman. Yeah, and we, we saw met. Julianne last night, and I realized why I like Julianne so much, because she makes me look calm. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we're going to have Raquel and Herman yeah. give their testimony during the week, and they're, they're a part of that yeah. group. And we love them. Yeah, but so. they, just, they just, I mean, you knew it. I mean, you're, you, you, they, they've amplified, you know, Butch and Julianne and their family, and Carly and Sophia and, and, and Raquel and, all, and, and Herman and our, our whole Bible study there. You know, it's, 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 it's Holy Spirit fire. It's our family of believers. Yeah, it really is. It really is. So I when, think the, when the cancer returned this time, you and Connie both just had grown so much in the word. It's like uh, you didn't need the doctors that last time. You had faith and you just uh, supernaturally received. It, yes, absolutely. Um, and I will tell you, I much prefer the feeling of peace mm. that comes over us from having that promise. I think it's um, John 14, uh, Jesus says, I'm leaving you with a gift. Peace is what I give you as a gift and the peace that the world cannot give you. So let not your heart be troubled, let it not be afraid. And I love that promise and that promise is what I wanna hold on to. I don't wanna hold on to that horrible, dark cloud of fear that we lived under while we were fighting his cancer. We have yeah. Yeah. an and amazing you know, gift. You know, you know the, um, the great thing for us too is that we have a connection to the world, right? We both, uh, we reach millions of people on the, on the radio every, every week and these are not Christian radio stations. But when you have a testimony and what a, and, and what a great message this, this is to people who are trying to figure out how to share their faith, everybody has a testimony, right? Everybody has, if, if you're in Christ, you have a victory that you can talk about. And you saw it in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, the program that we taped for, for public television mm -hmm. at right there at, at Karis Bible. We put Mark 11, 23 on the screen. Yeah, I talked awesome. about my healing. You know, millions of people who, who, who don't have a relationship with Jesus were able, were able to see that. And so- And then say, what is that? Right, right. And, and you know, even being able to say something as simple as to, to people, especially during this time of, of, of a pandemic, is, you know, death and life, Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, right? Just being able to say that was, if somebody had said that to me years ago, it would have just sort of passed over. But, but the revelation happened to us. To speak life over him, to and, speak yeah, life over yeah, us instead yeah. of speaking death. And it's hard to do. Yeah. Um, in, in, in a hospital environment, in a doctor environment, it's really hard. Um, and I've heard some other testimonies from you about people who, uh, you know, don't come in the room if you're going to speak death. And, right. and Cha-Cha used to like to say, 
speak pretty to me. She would say that to her doctor, speak pretty to me. So, you know, it's really hard not to speak death or hear all of that negative stuff while you're and in And Connie body. started doing this when, when her mom, uh, Anne, was in the in the hospital and they were basically giving her last right last rites and said so we had to start the doctors would, would come in there and start speaking this over over Anne about what how bad her condition was and, and she said, kicked, she kicked them right out. So there is a little Julianne so in you. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna my have mom, my mom just passed 91 years old. Yeah, my amazing. mom just passed right. in July. Amazing. But she gave me the best gift um, and was I think four days before his first cancer surgery, my mom had a massive stroke that took her speech and took her right side. The night before that stroke, my mom took the promise of Jesus. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. She took that promise the night before her stroke. Wow. What other gifts? So Crazy. she survived five years after that stroke, and she went to be with the Lord on July 6th. Let me say that y'all are a tremendous testimony in many ways, but one of them is that, like you were saying, Connie, there's no bad way to receive your healing. The first time that this cancer hits you, you depended upon the medical stuff and took their instructions, and without that, John would have been dead. But as you grew the second time, this peace that you had, uh, allowed you to just receive directly from God without the medical things. And today you're completely cancer free. We've got seven minutes left here. I would like you to address some of the people watching about how do they know which way to go? How did you know when it was time for you just to, uh, exit off of the medical ramp and get into just trusting God? How do you do that? Well, I'll say before you get started, I'll, I'll say that that I'll never forget the day you and I, Connie, were in the car and we were right there on the fence, right? We were getting ready to make the decision. We called you up on your cell phone and we said, what do you think this terrible thing to do to you? What do you think we should do? And we had a long conversation. And you said, well, you I'm said, I believe you're healed. You said, I believe you're healed. And then you said, but you have to figure out what you have faith for. Hmm. I mean, that's, that's when you think about that, I mean, it's a, it's a short little sentence. But it's the truth. It, it, it was something, the Holy Spirit hit my heart and his heart at the same time. And there was no question. Um, and when we got home from the hospital and we stood in our bedroom face to face, it was in agreement and we had not turned back. That peace of God, let the peace of God rule in your heart. I'd say that's one of the dominant uh, indications. But Absolutely. you know, there's, there's also, and, th and we learned this in, in the Bible study with Butch and Julianne and, and the team there, is because cancer has come after me since then, the thoughts of cancer, right? It's like you wake, when you wake up, everybody knows this feeling except for probably you, Andrew, because your mind is so <laughs> renewed. But uh, you wake up at two o'clock in the morning and then you start having, because how, how many thoughts do you have? Second it's, Corinthians 10, five. Yeah, Take Second Corinthians. all yeah. thoughts Cap captive to the obedience of Christ. It's a constant with me. Yeah. It yeah. is a constant. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't let my guard down and I stand on that scripture whenever those same thoughts come creeping in. And like I said before, I much prefer the peace. You know, I, 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 Connie and I basically wrote the, the, the Relentless book together, but a, a, a big stream in that book, and you and I talked about it on, on television, is, is you have to figure out what your process is, you know? And it sounds, it sounds clinical, it sounds scientific, or, or whatever, but whether it's, whether it's exercise or, or plugging into your healing, plugging into God, plugging into renewing your mind, it's, I always think of, of myself personally as, a, as a, I'm a Navy SEAL buds training or something where I, okay, I have to do this and I got to do this. It's, I'm not doing it to, I was like, what do I have to do? What are the 10 things I have to do to get healed? I know that I'm healed. The battle after that for me is continually renewing my mind and understanding that I'm not going to talk about it all the time, but I also understand that over here is Satan who's coming to kill, steal, and, and destroy. Recognizing the fact that I do have an, en that I have an enemy, but the weapons of my warfare are, are spiritual. And I, and I want to say, I want to describe, because I know, I, I know we're running out of time, but I want to describe 
what we do every day, the two of us, it's a little bit different, but all day, whether I'm training uh, outside, you know, working out or, or, or just, you know, even just editing something or whatever, I have an earpiece in, it's connected to YouTube and YouTube is connected to either you or Barry <laughs> Bennett or Dwayne Sheriff or, or, or Daniel or, 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 or any of those guys. And it's, it, cause so there's healing message going on and there's, and there's so many of those videos and, and she never misses your TV show. Yeah. I go to bed listening to the one that was on at 4 a.m. that morning. But, um, just today when we were getting ready for this, you know, we have earpieces in our ear and John was testing his earpiece. He goes, are you hearing something? I said, yes, I hear them fine. He goes, I'm not hearing anything. I'm not hearing. So he yeah, had, it was his connected to Paris Bible School. <laughs> He had the wrong ear yeah. Well, you are plugged in. That's all. Awesome. Yeah. You, man, I love you guys. And, and for those watching, I just want you to know that I've gotten to know John and Connie personally, and we text each other and call and do things. And they're the real deal. And they're in a different uh, area than God's called me to. God called me to teach the body, to teach John and Connie things. But they're out there dealing with people you, that Jesus. don't even know the Lord. And yet, man, it's just so encouraging to me to see people with their passion, they've grown, they're mature, they're changing other people's lives. John was at my Phoenix thing and, and there was a, a mother, mother that was, had a son that was demon possessed and they wanted me to go out and minister to him. And I said, I just hadn't got time. So I said, uh, Butch and Julie Ann, you go minister to him. And they took John out there. And me too. I was there too. Yeah, oh, she was I, the door. Yeah. Yeah. I heard John. Yeah, I want to tell you something. Yeah, it, it, it was uh, just real quickly, okay, real quickly. We're in a Winnebago, and this poor kid who seems to be possessed is in there with his mom. He locks himself in the bathroom in the Winnebago, right? And we're trying to get him out because we're afraid he's going to hurt himself. So Butch says to me, he says, Butch Hartman says to me, he says, get a knife and, and give it to me because I'm going to open up the, uh, I'm going to open up the door. And so I'm holding the knife and I go, Butch, what are you going to do when the demon takes the knife away from you? And he goes, good, good, good point. And gives it back to me. It was definitely a bonding experience <laughs> between us. and. But I uh, tell you what, they have been in it and they are just a uh, super blessing. So anyway, just real quickly, would you all just yeah. pray and speak to the people who are watching this? I know many people have seen you on television. They've seen you on these specials. They've been to your concerts. They are so blessed to find that, man, here's a brother and sister in the Lord out there in the marketplace, and they would just receive from you. So speak directly to them, pray for them before we quit. I will start because my prayer is pretty much the same. They, the family knows, and he could pick it up. My is Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. You know, it, 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 seems, all, right? it, seems, it seems simple, but sometimes when we all go to this before pandemic, but we would go to a hospital and, and we would lay hands on the sick. Uh, that, you know, you, you, you run out of things to say and, and you just, we just lay hands and just Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I, I just want to say, I've tried everything. I'm 68 years old, okay? I, I've lived in the world. Both of us have lived in the world for so many years. We've tried everything. And, and as, as, as you're always saying, Andrew, you know, uh, if, if you've tried everything and nothing is working, understand that if you don't try the word of God, then there's no way <laughs> it's going to work. And, and if you just have one scripture, if you just, you know, you're, you're, you're bouncing around right now, whether you're watching in the kitchen or you're listening in your car or whatever, take the, the, the first step and just look up. You can just look up. You don't even have to have a Bible. Just Google Mark 11 colon 23 and read that and read that and read that and understand that if you get that, you get everything and understand too that not only do you have a better way to pray, but now you have an organization that you should be partnering with because that's all they believe. You know, right there over, over Andrew's shoulder and in the shadow of Pike's Peak, what is there? The most amazing Bible college that you might not have ever heard about. And what he's doing, he did it to us, he's done it to Butch and Julianne and all of our friends, is training up people to share the healing power. And learning that you have the authority. You have the authority, and, and that was something that was never taught to either one of us. Mm. And, and, and 
Andrew teaches and Karis teaches about how to take that authority. Because when you, and, and, and healing, and when you look at Jesus's ministry, it was all about healing. But for some reason, that was left out of teaching in the churches that yeah. we were in before this. Well, I love you guys. You are just such a blessing. I know this has blessed people. And real quickly, would you tell them how to get your book, Relentless? Because I had you on the television, and we inter and it is amazing. John was homeless, living in a tent, and in a short period of time, world famous, came from being homeless, has been through this cancer. The way that John and Connie meant, it's amazing that Connie would even look at him after the way he treated her. <laughs> Oh my God! You need that's to get this tease. book you, and that's read that's that you, story. That's that's Thank the you. worst tease ever. Oh my gosh! But it's that's true, right. isn't it, Connie? Right. You hey, are right. You know, I sure mean, Jamie, Jamie, he forced himself on Connie. I'm sure the publisher believes that that's the best way the book has ever been promoted. So thank you so much. So, you know, it's 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 all over Amazon.com and and also, uh, you know, uh, Connie edited the book and she also directed me when I read it. So you can get you can listen to me read the book. And Andrew's talking about the nobody uh, else would. So I just <laughs> <laughs> All right, you've got lots of stuff to do. We're going yeah. to go Thank there's, you we're, so we're much. Go we love you. Fight. We love Jamie. Thank you. <laughs> love y'all. Go. God bless you. Perfect. Isn't that great? Right. Let's give Jesus praise for what he's doing there. Man, what a blessing.